Hi everybody, it's Caroline here. Welcome to my channel. And today I am working with the February Best of Both Worlds kit um, to tell a story about my husband and my cat. And the challenge for this uh, layout is to work with black cardstock. Um, so I've pulled a piece of black cardstock out of my stash and the design has a torn piece of bold paper at the top, a torn border strip at the bottom and then some layers behind the photos which are up in this top right section, um, a title underneath the photos and then a journaling spot um, to the left of the photos. So I'm going to pull out the kit and have a look through for some bold paper. I've got that gorgeous stripe but I am saving that for another Another challenge which will be working with black and white um, photos and so I'm going to work with this bold heart print that I've been saving I absolutely love it so I'm going to be tearing a piece of this to use as my top paper and because I've got quite a bit of it I'm actually going to tear a, another piece of this for the bottom of the paper rather than using a border strip so I'm just working out exactly where to make my tear and I want about a third of the page to have this bold print so that's about four inches um, and I'm just going to tear this off now and I will actually be inking everything with black including my um, torn edges I don't sometimes don't ink the torn edges but I just felt that I wanted to when I tear my cardstock, I like to tear it in the direction that has the kind of core of the of the paper showing, so that white inner of the paper. So um, just tidying things up, I'd torn the way I'd torn things. Although it's a, a, lovely to have an organic tear, it made things a little bit too um, tall on the bottom strip. So this is the rough placement of things. And my next piece, I'm actually going to save that paper because I'm going to fussy cut out the hearts for another layout. So once I've inked the edges, I'll be going through the collection to find a journal piece or something that I can journal on that I can pop to the left. Now, one thing I would say about the kit that I purchased is it was quite short on journal cards because I couldn't get all of Chamel's recommended products and I swapped in a few. Um, I didn't really think about it and I didn't swap in any um, cut apart sheets with journal cards. So I'm a bit short on them. So I'm looking for any cards that I've got left. I've actually only got a six by four card and also any um, papers that I might be able to write on. So although I don't need six by four as a card in its entirety I could certainly tuck that under the photos to give a bit of a layering effect um, and so I'm going to have a look and see I know I want to use that pink as one of my paper layers behind the photo and I've got a, a piece of a journal card left on another part one of the cutter parts which is what I'm just cutting out now um, and I think it all depends on the story that I want to tell so if I hadn't got a lot to say I could have put it on this card. If I had a lot to say, I could have um, tucked it behind and some hidden journaling um, or typed it a little bit smaller. Um, but I've got a kind of medium amount that I want to add for these stories. So in the end, I'm going to be going with that six by four card tucked behind the paper layers. Um, but first of all, I'm going to work out just how much of um, just how much I'm working with once the, the photos are layered up. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just, I've made a rough um, indent in the paper with my nail as to where the photos will sit when they're adhered down. And I'm just going to cut this one layer and stick my photos just really lightly to it so I can then try to decide between the six by four card or that smaller piece of a card that's left. So just really lightly tacking these down. I want to stagger them a little bit so that things aren't quite so blocky and just so I've got a little bit more of those paper layers and just for some interest. Nothing stuck down to the background yet um, because on Chamel's original project, she put quite a lot of stenciling underneath the photo. So I wanted to try the stenciling and I do go with it. Um, I do it in a different way to the design that Chamel uses, um, but I'm happy with it. I don't normally stencil on pages. Will I rush to stencil again? Probably not, but I'm glad that I had, um, I'm glad that I had a play with some stencils and some, um, some of the distress oxides. So trying to decide between these two cards, I'm going to ink the edges of whichever one I choose. I wasn't too happy with the floral showing underneath. And my intention was to actually hide that floral with some um, paper embellishments or a strip of paper. But I 
in the end I don't I just I like I leave it there as a touch of color showing um, so just inking the edges of that one and then I'm going to layer it up underneath the photos and it gives me plenty of place to write my story off camera later on so now that I know roughly where everything's going to go I'm going to get the oxides out have a play on one side of the cardstock and see if I like it and I'm not gonna lie I struggled I was really happy with the placement of the stencil on the one side on the following kind of Chamel's design layout but then I smudged that this is the original one that I'd done there um, but I smudged all the um, oxide you couldn't see it it was just a bit too juicy and then I put something down and it smudged and I was really disappointed um, so I had to go with this this format because I'd already got the oxide on there and I didn't want to waste a piece of cardstock so that, it's fine it's fine it's what it is and I'm happy in the end um, I'd brought this on this side I would brought the stencil which is a kind of sequin waist a faux sequin waist stencil I bought it down a little bit further than I wanted but I end up kind of covering some of that up with some additional paper layers I think that's the beauty when you're working with um, scrapbooking you can just add more paper if you don't like something just cover it up with some more paper um, so that's what I'm going to end up doing so now I'm actually doing everything down, I'm committing and um, I'm just going to go with it. What I do do when I add my adhesive is I always um, adhere about an inch in from the edges because that way it enables me to build layers um, retrospectively. So to decide actually I do want um, a border strip here or I'd like something else there and I haven't got to pull up too much of the paper, I haven't got to tear too much of what's underneath. Um, I've just put a lot of adhesive but in the centre of the, the photos or the piece of paper and then it gives leaves those edges free for me to just tuck things under. So because I'm not happy with how much of that stenciling is showing underneath my bold paper, I'm pulling in a piece of a border strip that I had saved from the sticker sheet. So um, another good thing is if you're going to hide a lot of an element completely under one layer, cut some off and then save some so that it looks, it gives the illusion of going underneath the layer, uh, but you've still got some for later. Um, and I'm also going to use a bit of this bold heart doodle on a black background as just a strip of paper. I was going to punch a border um, shape onto it, but I've decided to, you'll see I've pulled up that, bo that border sticker already. I'm going to just tuck this under as a layer and then put that scalloped sticker over the top of it just to build some different layers. S there's, it's subtle because it's on black, um, but I don't mind that. But I just wanted to hide as much of that um, stenciling, just hide a little bit of it because it was just a bit too much for my eye. It didn't, it felt a bit heavy with the stenciling. It didn't feel quite kind of um, at the right ratio. I wanted to hide some of that. Once I get these border strips down, I'm going to be looking through the cut apart sheets and the pattern papers and that one sticker sheet to see what embellishments I can pull out to just add some additional interest and to um, if, if there's any of the word phrase stickers that can help with the uh, with the story that I'm going to tell. Uh, there's a really lovely sheet that I'm saving that's got uh, that I could certainly cut apart but I, I know that coming up there is a wreath um, challenge and I was going to cut out the some of the shapes I think the hexagons I was going to cut out some of the hexagons for this page but then I suddenly thought oh I could use pretty much all of those fussy cut out for the wreath challenge so I'm um, I'm really pleased that I had that moment of epiphany uh, and I'm saving that in my stash now so that I can do that and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that's going to come together uh, so what I'm doing here is I've just used my we are memory keepers uh, tab punch to punch a tab out uh, inking the edges in black and I've popped it up above that photo because there's a little bit too much of the pink showing for my liking um, I'm going to move that to tab so many times I think I cut it out lots so you will see in the end that it gets put somewhere different to where it is at the moment um, I don't know why I had such an issue with it but I move it around all over the place uh, and I've also used that tab to punch out a piece of that heart doodle paper and I'm going to pull that design element down to the bottom right of the paper um, if I've got a pattern or a color showing in one area of the um, layout if I'm using something like an embellishment cluster in a really um, distinctly different place like here I've got in that bottom right corner I want to make sure that I've got a representation of that color that pattern that design element down there 
um, just for everything to feel cohesive so that it doesn't kind of sit there as a weird little um, design cluster, um, embellishment cluster on its own on the right. I want to make sure that everything feels nice and cohesive. So now I want to build those embellishment clusters using the sticker sheet. I know that I've only got, I think, three, including this project, or three or four um, challenges to, to go with this kit. Um, I know that one of those is the wreath and I'm going to use lots and lots of the hexagons fussy cut out and a few of the little pieces. And there are a few pieces on here that I'm really, really going to struggle to use. So I'm going to pull those in. I may not normally have picked them for this layout, but they, they don't necessarily match the, the story. I think I pull in a, um, a, a ticket and other things like that. I think there's a kind of candy floss or an ice cream that I just took underneath for the colour. Um, but I don't mind actually. I, I normally wouldn't pick pull them in, but I know that if I put this sticker sheet with that candy floss or ice cream, whatever it's meant to be, if I put that back into my stash, if ever I happen to be doing a, a layout about eating a candy floss or an ice cream, I'm going to forget that I've got this sticker sheet somewhere in my craft room um, so it just makes more sense to me to just get it on here I took it under the photo so you can't really see what it is it's just a pop of color in an embellishment cluster I layer other embellishments on the top and it works really really well for me so I was really happy that I decided to just get over it and get things onto the page I'm lightly adhering down the stickers at the moment because I'm not sure where I completely want them to go. So I'm not sure about that I Heart You clipboard. I'm not sure about that flag. So I've just really lightly stuck them so that I can lift them and move them around if I want to. And I'm going to be pulling in, in a short while, some word phrase stickers. I'm going to layer them up onto those tabs that I've already punched and just onto the background and onto the photo layers, just as a small embellishment, just to bring in some color across the page as well and it works really really well now I am going to give you a little bit of a spoiler alert here um, and I will make sure I rectify this for when I take photos and put them onto Instagram but I will complete this whole video um, and I'll be really really happy with my end product my end layout and then I stopped recording and I looked down at it and I realised I had again forgotten the title. I can't believe it. I mean, you don't need to have a title. You know, I could have, I, it, it'll be fine. It could go in my album without a title. But I had deliberately left that stencil border along the bottom of the photo as a place to hold my title. That's why I had left as much of the border, the stenciling showing. And that's why I hadn't layered different paper layers there so I am going to put a title on because when I look at it now I keep thinking oh I can't believe you didn't put your title um so yeah you might you, you may not have noticed you may think that this page look and it does I'm really happy with the page without the title um but I wanted a title I've got the title ready to go and I'd saved the space for it so I am going to um stick those um alphas down and then when I take my photo and share this on Instagram, you will see it with the title in place. Now you'll see some rainbow puffy stickers up in the top of the screen there. And I pulled those in from my stash because uh, Chamel had put into this kit list, um, I think they're called Bella Pops, some kind of enamel puffy stickers of rainbows that matched this collection really, really well. And I couldn't get hold of those from the supplier that I purchased from. So I decided to just discount it. And then as I was building this um, layout, which is the one that Chamel uses for her for those elements I remember that I had some puffy stickers so I pulled these out but in the end I don't use them um, I could have brought them in but I'm really happy with the way the layout looks the rainbow doesn't really match the story it doesn't you know the ones that I had in my stash didn't really match the photos sorry the, the papers perfectly so I just I pulled them out I thought I was going to use them decided not to and that's fine I'll just go back in my stash and I'll use them at some point in the future so just adding in the last few stickers now, there are lots of stickers left on here. Here's where I'm pulling in those rainbows and just thinking no. And then the last thing that I will do is I will pull it over the enamel dots that I bought and I will add a cluster into um, a cluster of the dots, a large, medium and small of each colour 
um, into the three embellishment areas on the page. So one by that I heart you, one over by that kind of candy floss thing and one down on the bottom right. And then I do decide when I look at them um, to add in a fourth cluster. Um, I don't it's interesting because I've always worked with a visual triangle, but I've noticed that lately I have been adding in a fourth cluster. Um, it doesn't make a square or anything like that, but there always just seems to be a different area where I think, oh, I'd like to kind of frame that area as well. So in this um, layout, I'm going to pop it on that um, heart, that bold heart paper. Now you don't really see the enamel dots very well. They don't really stand out because where I put them in those other clusters, they're on the black cardstock. Um, but for some reason, it just made me feel that things were much more balanced and just better to have that um, those enamel dots in that space. So here they are going on. I really, really love the way these colours just pop on that black cardstock. Um, I don't use black cardstock very often, but when I do... I'm always reminded of just how much I really love it. So I've got to remember that and use it more often because it, especially bright colours like this, they just stand out and pop so nicely. It just looks really, really pretty. So here is the finished layout. The only thing I need to do is add my journaling onto that journaling spot and also add in that title so that it's all complete. I really enjoyed creating this page. I enjoyed playing with the stencils. If you're going to give this design a go, I suggest you have a play with those stencils as well. They're really, really fun. So if you have enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't already, please do subscribe. I'd love to see you um, to be able to share my videos with you more often. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.